So when should we be thinking about a diagnosis of vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? Well, there are a number of features that raise the possibility we would consider them to be red flags that would point us towards genetic testing for vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And these include easy bruising without obvious cause. So if somebody is bruising really easily and there's been no trauma, particularly on areas that you wouldn't expect to develop bruises, like on the face or on the back, that is a red flag. If there is a personal or family history of arterial aneurysm with dissection or rupture under the age of 40, this is definitely an indicator that we should be thinking about the possibility of vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome as a possible cause. Bowel perforation is another potential complication of the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So if anyone has either a personal or a family history of bowel perforation, that is another red flag. Patients may develop something called a carotid cavernous sinus fistula. This is a malformation of the blood vessel vessels in the head behind the eye. And this can happen with trauma, but if a carotid cavernous sinus fistula develops in the absence of trauma, this is something else that makes us worry that this could be related to vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Spontaneous pneumothorax is another red flag, and the personal or family history of spontaneous pneumothorax should prompt consideration of the diagnosis. We also worry about about it if a woman has had a uterine rupture in the third trimester of pregnancy, because this can be a complication of vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome.